Hey, what's up, guys? I'm um, going to be doing a quick video. Actually, might not be very quick, but um, a video on how to repair a Logitech PC wireless headset. Um, I've seen some things online about people having problems with left side earphone, uh, cutting in and out of sound um, during normal usage. Um, I also experienced this after I got mine. I bought mine off of eBay. They were refurbished. Um, they came in an RMA bag from Logitech. Um, with the serial number, model number, all that information, barcode, all that stuff on it. Um, but I did contact Logitech. Of course, they wouldn't cover it with the warranty. Um, I did ask them if they had a diagram on how to tear this thing apart um, for, you know, just, just to fix it on your own. But um, they couldn't supply anything, so I went ahead and just dove right into it and figured it out on my own. Um, it's actually a pretty simple process. Um, not much is involved. Um, it's kind of tedious. There's a lot of little stuff in there you got to deal with. Um, but um, the difficulty is not really hard at all. Um, it does require a little bit of soldering skills um, as you're going to be desoldering and resoldering um, two lines that actually go directly to the head, the headphone itself. Um, but what you're going to need to tear down the headset itself, um, put the headset aside, um, you're just going to need a small Phillips uh, screwdriver, something that's got a real small tip on it. Um, it doesn't have to be really this long. This one's the smallest one I had that actually had a small tip on it. Um, the shortest one, I should say. Um, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need a totally long one or a really short one, either way. Um, I also had this little tool, which was a precision uh, flathead that I actually grinded down. And I used it for another project, but it came in handy. Um, it was actually kind of easier to use than the Phillips um, screwdriver, so if you happen to have a precision flathead that you grinded down for something else, you can use that as well. Um, the other thing you're going to also need is uh, something to pry with. I just use the butter knife. Um, the part that you're actually going to pry is actually kind of hidden, so it doesn't really matter if you scratch it up. You don't want to break it, of course, but um, just go ahead and, you know, something like that will be fine. Um, and, of course, you're going to need a soldering iron. Um, this is mine here. It's just a basic Waller, um, a hobby iron, I guess you can call it. Um, this one's a 40 watt. I got it for about 20 bucks uh, from Home Depot. Um, these are really good soldering irons. Um, Waller's a really good brand name. Um, the soldering iron heats up quick and it has very good heat. Um, flow solder very easily. The other thing I'm going to also recommend is a desoldering iron. Um, this will make this project uh, more of a breeze if you have one of these around um, to use, you know, for whatever you're going to need to desolder. Um, the other thing I'm also going to recommend for the soldering iron is a fine tip, uh, soldering tip. Um, there's a lot of small stuff in there and that parts that you're going to actually be soldering are really small, so it comes in handy. I did use a medium size on mine, um, which wasn't a problem, but I wouldn't recommend using a large one. Um, so if you have one of these, use this. If you don't, um, use a medium one. If you don't have that, then go out and buy one of these because anything larger than that I think you'll have problems with. Um, and then the solder that I used was just basic 6040 rosin core. Um, I did use leaded solder. I just I feel it flows better. It makes a better joint, um, a stronger joint. Um, you can use non-lead or uh, lead-free solder. That's fine, I guess. Um, but if you use leaded, make sure it's ventilated. Make sure you don't inhale this stuff when the smoke comes up in your face. It's not really good. Um, all right, and then just jump into the headset. Um, like I said, it's not real hard to tear apart, so we're going to go ahead and start now. Uh, make sure your headset's off. Mine was on. I was just using it. Um, first things first, this little cushion you see here, um, the padding, it comes off pretty simply. You just got to pull this piece away from the plastic plate that it's actually resting on, and it'll just come straight off pretty easy. Um, so go ahead and set that aside. Now, this piece here you see, um, there's two screws. There is one right here, and then there's one on this side. Um, go ahead and pull those apart. And this plate actually has some glue on the back. Um, this headset I already repaired, so there's not as much glue, but it might be kind of sticky to pull it off. Um, so go ahead and pull that apart. Make sure you don't lose those screws. They're really small and really easy to lose. Um, once you get that plate off, you'll see the actual speaker itself behind there. Um, just go ahead and use the flathead to pull it apart or anything you can to get in there. Um, you don't want to pull it too far away because your wires are probably going to be pretty short. Um, like I said, I already repaired this, so I have a lot of extra slack that I put in here. Um, just due to the fact that the wiring that they put in here from Logitech was extremely short and was actually really hard to work with. 
Um, so go ahead and put that speaker aside. Um, now you'll notice right in the center here, there is a very small screw. It's not as small as the other ones, um, but go ahead and remove that because it's holding this pivot onto this plate that actually moves. Um, now once you remove that, go ahead and set that aside. Don't lose that as well. Um, but you'll notice that once you remove that screw, you still cannot pull this piece apart, um, which is where you're going to pry something or use something to pry. Um, you can use your hands if you want to. Um, it's not a big deal, but you need to be very careful because this plastic is somewhat thin, and um, I'm sure it can easily break. Um, but if you have like a butter knife or something like that, you can just stick it in there and um, just kind of slightly turn it, and it'll pop right off. And when you pull this part back, you notice there's some foam. Um, your foam will probably have a hole, um, which is a very small hole. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I actually cut mine because I just used it to run the wires in and out of that little hole, but it did hold the wires pretty well. Um, but once you get that out of the way, uh, you'll notice this last piece, you're almost to the center now, um, has four screws holding it all together. Um, these screws are a little bit larger. Um, so this is where my Phillips came into handy um, so as not to strip them or damage them or anything like that. So go ahead and remove these ones. There's four all together and they're kind of offset so this plate that you're taking off now only goes on one way. Um, so you don't have to really remember how it goes or nothing like that. But you do want to remember how your wires are routed. Um, when you open this up, I'm pretty sure your wires are going to rip which is the reason why your speaker cuts in and out. Now right away you can see all this slack of wire that I have in here. Um, like I said, I did that because they have a very, very short wire connecting the headphone, um, which I think is one of the main reasons why it does that, uh, where it starts cutting in and out. Um, but once you get it open, you'll notice inside here there's a very small clip, um, a circuit board, and um, I'm guessing another battery. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's a battery or not, but it's plugged in for whatever it may be, it looks like a battery to me. Um, but you can go ahead and pull that up. It does have a little bit of glue or a sticky pad on the back. Um, so go ahead and just pull that up, and then it has a clip holding it on, um, which you can go ahead and disconnect. Just be careful you don't rip the wires out of the actual pocket. Um, now once you get that off, you'll notice on the board itself, there are two very small screws. Um, I'm not sure if you can see this really well, um, but there are two screws. There's one right here, and then there's one over to the side. Um, go ahead and remove these screws. Like I said, they're somewhat small, so don't lose these as well. They're black, so if you drop it on something dark, you're not going to be able to find it. Um, now, what you'll also notice is that there's a ribbon cable. Um, this ribbon cable here is held in by a kind of a lock. I can't remember what these locks are called, but you basically put one side, put a little pressure going up, and then the other side do the same thing, and it will unlock that cable, um, and it will release the board itself. So go ahead and grab that board, and you can kind of pull it back.